What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I have my eyes on right now, and I'm looking to trade in the month of December of 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we're going to be talking about you guys in this video yet again, natural gas and degas, and kind of what sent down down the overall markets today in terms of the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ, because if you saw, and if you look at my screen right here, you can see the markets tank today, and I want to go over that and kind of break down some technicals, but before we do, all I ask from you is if you enjoy the video, simply go down below and hit that like button, and consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me, and if you want to be further connected with me and the Strive Smart community, the Discord group chat link is down below, as well as the Facebook group linked down below in the description box. So let's talk about the S&P here, guys, just like we start out in every single video. The market just closed seven minutes ago, and the S&P closed down $27.11, down 0.86%, which again is one of the biggest red days that we've seen here in the recent history of the market. If you guys can see, you know, over the past couple of weeks, dating back to probably the beginning of October, we we haven't really seen a sell-off this drastic. Maybe this day right here probably uh, was the last day that we saw this big of a sell-off, but ever since then, it's been two months almost of straight running up for the S&P. So this was a much-needed correction in my opinion, and if we zoom in a bit on the S&P to kind of break it down, it makes sense, right? We pushed up to 31.54, hit that all-time high, we got extremely overextended in terms of the RSI, and honestly, we were overextended above that 50 SMA a lot in my opinion like I've been mentioning in these videos so it makes sense that we're pulling down right now and technically we're still at a higher low right here on the S&P from the previous and although we broke that 50 SMA support which is not too good we're still holding that 180 SMA support which is this yellow line so that's a pretty good sign and the RSI is all the way to the oversold side so this could be a potential dip for the S&P. All we need to see is this pop now and ultimately a break above the EMA and honestly that 50 SMA as well. And that's kind of what I want to see before I buy up this dip on the S&P 500, right? And if we zoom in a bit more, you can see, you know, bulls kind of took over here. If we actually go to the one day, one minute, you'll be able to see it a bit better. You know, we sold off aggressively like we saw, lost about 40 points on the S&P. Then the bull started to take over here then ultimately the bears kind of took over again in power hour um, sending us down to pretty much the support level at around 3110 that we got to earlier on in the day so in terms of the s p here guys is this a bottom? We have to wait and see for the futures tomorrow morning, in my opinion, right? If we're gapping up 5, 10 points in terms of these futures, you know, that's a good sign that this is the bottom and we're continuing up. And if we go back to that hourly chart, if that happens in terms of the futures gap up, we'll be pushing up very nicely. But let's say, you know, these futures gap down, we break this kind of triple bottom support we're seeing to the downside, that's going to be quite negative negative in my opinion, and uh, who knows, we may see further selling off from there. So that's kind of my thoughts here um, on the S&P and kind of what happened in today's action, and you may be asking yourself, what is causing this? Well, it's really the tension between the U.S. and China, right? If you guys recall, a couple of days ago, Donald Trump, the U.S. president, signed a bill in Hong Kong, and now China is kind of retaliating with sanctions against U.S. human rights and a ban on military visits and this is actually not what we want to see right now because if you guys remember on the 15th of December that kind of rhymed that was not planned but on the 15th of December guys we have 150 something billion dollars of tariffs that are going to be active again and this is something that in my opinion if they go into effect and really the, the, the trade war worsens this market is going to hit I think the market is going to take a hit but I personally think if these tariffs 
A, get pushed back, which we've seen in the past, or B, completely get wiped out. If that happens, I think that's going to be fantastic for the market. But with this uncertainty right now, China and the U.S. kind of going back and forth with Trump, going kind of behind uh, uh, President Xi's back, you know, in terms of uh, that, that, that Hong Kong legislation. These things happening right before that December 15th deadline, that is causing some uncertainty in my opinion. Opinion, which is why we're seeing this sell-off. I'd love to see what you guys have to think about that down below. The Dow Jones here, guys, got hit almost 1%, 270 points in the red today. We pulled down aggressively from that all-time high. You guys can see it. Um, we tried holding that 50 SMA on the four-hour chart. Ultimately, we're breaking below it. That's not too good of a sign there. Um, you know, on the hourly chart, you guys can see we failed breaking out of the EMA, which would have been fantastic. Fantastic for the Bulls, but we got rejected, right? Now we're looking to test the 180 SMA on this hourly chart. If this breaks, guys, that's going to be extremely bearish, in my opinion, for the Dow Jones. And kind of like the S&P, you know, we sold off. The Bulls started to take over here, started to see a rally, but ultimately we sold off and we actually hit a lower low. So this thing really downtrended for the entire day, right? And if we pull up the NASDAQ, let's pull up that four hour chart first before we dissect the smaller time frames you guys can see healthy pull down right high or low we're holding that high or low from the previous although we did break that 50 SMA on the four hour chart we're still holding above that 180 SMA which is a pretty good sign and if we zoom into the hourly chart you guys can see although there is a bunch of crap on my screen right now which I do apologize about we're still holding that higher low like I mentioned which is looking quite good but now I just want to see that break above the EMA, which is this light blue line here on the chart. And I think that would be a good signal um, to really buy the dip on the breakout on the NASDAQ right here. So overall, guys, that's what I'm looking at in terms of these markets and kind of what sent the markets down today. A lot of uncertainty. That's what it is. We know the markets hate uncertainty, and uh, that's really what's sending the markets down at this point. So let me know what are your thoughts on that, and I'd love to hear your thoughts because we are a community at the end of the day. So let me know down below and let's talk about what I did today in terms of my trading. So in terms of my trading today, guys, I took a position in Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA. And we saw an extremely bullish move this morning on Tesla, which is really what prompted me to take this initial position. I did not catch it here on this massive spike. That would have been nice, right, if I got in at about 3.30, but no. No, I did not catch it there. I actually caught it on the pullback here at about 300 and 32 bucks, right? I think I got in initially at around 332, and this is a position that I'm looking to swing trade. And if you guys saw my video yesterday, I talked about kind of more in depth why I wanted to get into Tesla, but I'll break it here, uh, break it down here for you all um, in, in, a, in a two minute little clip. So we all saw what happened in the past week. Well, most of us did. You know, you saw Tesla go from 360 down to about 330 bucks, and the drop in Tesla came after their unveiling of the Cybertruck, right? The stock, I believe, dropped the next day about 6%, dropped a couple of days after that until we found a support about two, three days ago at around 330 bucks. So we held it this day and we held it the next day, which then kind of prompted me to look at Tesla for a potential entry. We held it again. I believe this was on Friday. Then this morning, we launched out of that 50 SMA resistance, which is what I talked about in yesterday's video as being kind of the confirmation point for me to enter. Once we break that level, if we break that level, that's where I'm looking to enter. So we got that break again this morning. Like I said, on the one day, one minute, we saw it, that very bullish move. And that prompted me to get in on the next pull down again at around 332, 333 um, is where I'm currently in right now. And I plan on adding more money into Tesla, um, probably if we break around 340 bucks. That's where I'm looking to add my second position. And ultimately, I'm looking to swing trade this one to at least 350. That's my first sell point and probably just get out of it completely at around 360 bucks. So in terms of my trading guys, no day trading really today. You know, it might have been a good day to trade TVIX, but honestly, um, I did 
didn't, although it was up 10%. And by the way, yes, they just saw a reverse split, um, which is why it went from 6 bucks up to 70 bucks. And you can see up 6 bucks today, again, like I said, 10%. It would have been good to trade it, but I didn't trade it, if I'm being completely honest with you guys. You know, SQQQ could have been good today. SPXS, these are all that go up whenever the overall markets are selling off. So overall, that is what I did. I added a little position into Tesla. I'm still holding my Home Depot shares, and I'm kind of waiting to see if this market ends up rallying back up from here. I want to see, is this simply a correction before we continue to higher highs, or is there further uh, uh, downside in store here? Because again, with trade, with these tensions, with uncertainty, a lot of stuff could happen. So I'm being honestly a bit more cautious here um, over these next 10, 14 days than I normally would be, um, but I'm still being aggressive, right, at the same time. I'm being cautious with storing cash, waiting for deals, but I'm still investing. I'm still trading in the market, um, you know, because I believe in it at the end of the day. So let's talk about you gas, D gas, natural gas. Then we'll talk about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching right now in December. So you gas today, guys, up eight cents, up 1%, almost 0.86% to be exact. And today honestly felt like kind of a, a calm day for natural gas, D gas, and you gas, really. It's been up and down, crazy volatility over the past couple of days, but today was kind of the calming before the storm, it feels like, right? This thing, I feel, could go up a ton tomorrow, or it could end up dumping through the floor yet again, because these technicals, they're not really showing us a, a definitive breakout or a definitive dumping point, because you can see, sure, $8.50, at more like 9 bucks. I guess you can say is a short-term bottom, based on these technicals, right? We kind of bottomed out there on the 29th of November. We bottomed out there today twice, and we started to break up a bit into the close of the market today. So that's a good sign for a temporary bottom, but we're still not full on exploding out quite yet, which is why I'm not really convinced quite yet that this is a full on breakout. But on the flip side, again, I'm not convinced that we're dumping quite yet because we didn't definitively break down below eight uh, eight ninety to about nine bucks quite yet which is that very strong level of support so very calming day to day for you gas d gas natural gas in general if you go to d gas you can see you know this one was up or rather down four percent today but still that's nothing compared to what it's been doing these t these past couple of days guys you can see a couple days ago it was at 108 bucks then it went up to 180 in the matter of three four trading days which is ridiculous. So a 4% move, either up or down, at the end of the day, that's really not much at all for DGAS, you know, considering what it's been doing. And if we look here at the natural gas futures, guys, the January contracts, they're up about six cents, um, up 2.63%, which is kind of odd because UGAS is really not moving, you know, uh, uh, like the way it should be because it's supposed to be a 3x ETN, but it's up almost almost 1%, but the natural gas futures contracts, they're up about 26 to 3%. So that's a bit wonky today. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that is, but sometimes I've noticed that you guys and D guys, they don't move exactly 3% um, in terms of that correlation with the underlying asset, which in this case is natural gas. But hey, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and that's really the risk that the risk that you do take when you trade these. But anyway, it was up 2.63% today. You guys can see this is where we kind of bottomed in the middle of the day at about 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard. And we started to climb from there, which is why you saw you guys sell off this morning and then slowly start to rally back up. So I guess you can say from the bottom here, 890 up to about 930, that was about a 5% move. So let's see what 
that was on natural gas to see how that correlates. So um, 5% for you guys, the bottom move from 230 up to about 240. Yeah, see, that's about 1.8. So yeah, 1.8 times 3, that's roughly about 5%. So you guys can see how that correlation is um, between these futures and you guys. So let's talk about some weather here that I'm looking at over the next couple of days that could definitely impact the demand in these next couple reports that we're going to be getting for natural gas and maybe even hurt the demand. Two strong storms will impact the U.S. early this week with one currently tracking through the Great Lakes and the east with areas of rain and snow and highs of 30s to 50s. A milder, wetter storm will bring heavy rains to California with nearby states. The rest of the country will be mostly mild and, and dry to open the week besides the colder north plains. A reinforcing cool shot will sweep across the northeast midweek with highs of 30s and 40s, but the rest of the country will be relatively mild with highs of 40s to 70s, the warmest area being the far southern U.S. So overall, based on natgasweather.com, the demand will be moderate to high this week, the week being December 1st to December 7th. So as we all know, and I've been mentioning this, uh, mentioning this in these videos over the past couple of days, in the short term, natural gas demand has been week, right? We got a 28 billion cubic feet withdrawal this past week, which was far, far lower than what the estimates were, which is why we saw that ridiculous dump in natural gas. And a lot of people have been saying natural gas has been trading as though winter is over. So that is interesting. That's an interesting point because we kind of saw a peak and we're seeing a heavy decline here, like the real cold weather has already left. And that's an interesting point of view that I'd love to to know what you guys have to think of and really that is kind of what my thoughts are in terms of natural gas right now in the short term sure we may see a bit more downside due to this mild weather due to the warmer weather that we've been experiencing and like I've been mentioning over these past couple of days but ultimately I think a a, a bullish inventory report could be a catalyst here that shoots up the natural gas prices because we saw a bearish report send them down so heavily, I feel like any bullish, any sign of bullishness right now could send this thing flying right back up, maybe to 240, maybe mid 240s again, which could give us an opportunity for you guys. And at this point, guys, seriously, I think the low point for natural gas is nearing. I know a bunch of bears out there, they're saying a dollar 80, but honestly, I don't really see that happening. Maybe 220 at the lowest, that could potentially happen. But honestly, I see this thing rallying back up in the next, within the next month. I'm not going to put a timestamp on it. Well, I kind of just did. But within the next month, I'm looking to see some sort of bullish uh, momentum. And I really do think you guys will recover within the next couple of weeks. And we just have to be patient. Continue watching these weather reports continue dissecting these natural gas reports, the inventory reports, and that's what's really going to give us the hardcore data behind whether that move in natural gas to the upside and thus you guys will ever come, right? So those are my thoughts on the subject. Let me know down below what are your thoughts and let's talk about a couple of stocks that I'm looking at right now, rapid fire in the month of December. So the beauty about stock market sell-offs, guys, is it opens up opportunities opportunity for those that are looking to buy the dip. And with the big dip we saw in the markets today, a lot of stocks that I've been watching opened up. One of them being Nvidia, guys, ticker symbol NVDA. And I actually talked about this one in yesterday's video on Sunday's video and I was talking about how on the 3-year chart, we're seeing a potential gap up from 210 or rather 220 up to 250 forming right now for Nvidia, right? We saw how bull it's been, you know, ever since it's dumped from about 290 to about 130. And it's really just been completely bubble of weeks, guys. If you look at the 90 day chart, this thing has been ridiculous from 140 back in August to about 220 here, just three and a half months later. And now with this pull down, that's opening up a nice 5% potential on a stock that again, looks like it could break out from 220 to 250. So 
this is a really good dip buy, in my opinion, um, at about 210. And honestly, heading into tomorrow, I'm looking to see if it holds and maintains and kind of rallies around this 180 SMA support on the two hour chart, being that 90 day chart. And honestly, on the hourly chart, on the 20 day chart, I'd love to see a, a rally back up probably to 215, ah, maybe not 215, maybe 213 before considering a position. So NVIDIA, I'm liking it. I just need to see a, a confirmation of a bottom or some sort of support forming, and then I'll probably pull the trigger on NVIDIA. Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG is the, uh, the next one that I'm looking at. This one actually hit a high yesterday, or rather on Friday, at about 825. We sold off to 800. And we held that 50 SMA on the hourly chart, which has been a support level over these past couple of weeks. That's quite attractive that the uptrend is continuing and that this thing wants to push up and maybe even test 835, which is that next major resistance that I'm seeing here on the stock, right? And if we go to that four hour chart, this is looking very bullish. We broke the 180 SMA. If you guys remember, I actually swing traded Chipotle um, from 750 up to around this area at around 815 sold out now i'm looking to re-enter on this bullishness so very very bullish ema popping above that 180 sma we're pulling down we held a higher low now all i'm looking to see is what the futures are looking like tomorrow morning are we continuing this push to the upside if we are i might enter in 815 820 and ride it up again to about 835. That's kind of what I'm looking at here with Chipotle Mexican Grill. Neo stock NIO did very, very well today, up 8% yet again. And now it's testing that same resistance, 240, 250 roughly, that it tested a couple of days ago and failed, guys. And I think if Neo breaks this level, if we look at this four hour chart, there's a lot of potential, guys, up to about 270 and still. Stocks like Neo, penny stocks, they can fly like crazy in the matter of a couple of days. They can go 20, 30, 40% up, right? It's it's like no problem. So Neo, I'm looking to see if it does exactly that. From 240 up to 270, that's about an 11 to 12% profit margin that could very well happen and who knows? From 270 up to 330, I know that's a bit a, a bit um, uh, what's the word? That's a bit out there, right? But hey, it could happen. These things fly up on any single piece of really good news, like that mobile ideal um, with Intel. Ever since then, this stock has kind of been um, rallying up, right? So up to 330, that's a 37% potential, guys, on NEO. So I'm looking at this one, although it is speculative, a bunch of people probably don't like trading stocks like this. I think it's worth it if you are a big bit more risky and yeah, I wouldn't trade a lot of money with NEO. I just trade an amount that I'm willing to lose, and that's kind of what I'm looking at for this stock. The last one here is ticker symbol NFLX, also known as Netflix, guys. And this is one that I almost took a position in today, and I talked about this one in yesterday's video as well. And remember the two scenarios from yesterday's video? One of them was we might break 320 and then enter there for a swing up to 340. 40, or we may pull down to that 50 SMA and get a better margin of profit. And that's what actually ended up happening, right? We got rejected by 320, pulled down. We're holding 307, 309 here. And now it seems like we're continuing the uptrend. So why didn't I take a position in Netflix, guys? Honestly, I don't really know why. I just didn't feel comfortable pulling the trigger quite yet. And really, I'm just going to wait until tomorrow. There's no there's no sense of rushing, or rather, there's no need to rush anything. And I'm looking to see if this continues upwards. If this gaps up tomorrow as well, maybe to 311, 312, that's where I may add a little bit, then ultimately wait till 320 um, to see a test there again. And if it breaks, that's where I'll add a majority of 
of the position with targets of selling at about 330 so that's pretty much it for this video guys if you enjoyed it feel free to go down below hit that like button and consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me and if you want to be further connected with the strive smart community the discord link is down below as well as the facebook group check out that merch as well and don't forget to follow me on twitter as well that's also linked down below so i'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching as always peace out